So hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, today. My name is Eugenie, and I am Operations Coordinator and uh, Project Manager at Euroclio. And I would like to welcome you to the Sharing European Histories Self-Guided Course. Um, the Self-Guided Course is part of the Sharing European Histories Project, which is an initiative of Euroclio and the Evans Foundation. Um, Throughout the project, five European uh, history teaching strategies were created by a team of teachers, researchers, and curriculum developers. All these five teaching strategies are currently available in our website in nine different languages, nine different European languages, and five more will be added very soon. During this self-guided guided course, we will dive into all the different five teaching strategies with local um, teachers and local experts across Europe to see how they have used these strategies to develop and implement their own lesson plan. So in this session, we will take a closer look at the commemorative practices teaching strategy that is developed by Joanna Voidon. And the full name of the teaching strategy is using commemorative practices to teach that history is a uh, constructed narrative. With me here is Juraj, Juraj Varga, and he will show us today how he has, uh, well, how this teaching strategy has inspired him to create his own lesson plan. Juraj, could you please tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yes, hello everyone. Thank you, Eugenie, for the word. Uh, my name is Juraj Varga. I come from Slovakia and uh, I like to work with teachers. I work with teachers for the last seven years as educator, researcher, and trainer. And many times we have, with my colleagues, developed also specific workshops that deal with public spaces. And the word goes back to you. Thank you very much, Juraj. Well, then I suggest we just uh, get started. Here we go. Yeah. So um, in, in addition to the to the recorded sessions on the five different teaching strategies, this self guided course also consists of three live reflection sessions. During these live reflection sessions, the authors of the teaching strategies will reflect on, on, the, on the strategies that they created. You can find more information about the project, about the self-guided course, and the teaching strategies in the links provided below the video. History is all around us. It is presented on plagues, on monuments, on buildings, and even in the names of public spaces. This strategy aims to get students to consider how the commemorated past is constructed, why it is presented in this way, and what has been left out. This strategy aims to show that history presented in public spaces, but also more broadly, is a constructed narrative, and a narrative that therefore should be critically approached. It reveals how history is consumed outside of the classroom and beyond the textbook, and asks students to look uh, to look for diversity in the representations of actors or groups uh, that that may uh, that that who are or may be um, maybe may deserve to be represented. This strategy encourages students to analyze and deconstruct how the past is commemorated in their own cities, towns, or villages by looking into local cases of uh, of contested or commemorated practices. For example, historical plagues, monuments, buildings, or even street names. Yudai, I would like to invite you to show us your, your own lesson plan. Eugenie, thank you very much for the word. Uh, so talking about my lesson plan, I looked at uh, Joanna's strategy and uh, it's structured uh, in a general methodological way. And there is one example how to use it. And in that example, she works with plagues that are in public spaces and what uh, time periods they do represent, why are they there? And this inspired me to take monuments that I own, that I know in my hometown in Southeastern Slovakia in Trebišov and to work with them. Why were those monuments there? Uh, what for and uh, who they served? Well, like what was their purpose? 
And when we look at the, the aims, at the objectives, and at the learning outcomes of uh, my short lesson plan that I created based on Joanna's strategy, uh, we need to think about the students. So what do they get, get out of it? Uh, the first important thing is they develop critical thinking because they analyze visual and textual sources. And the most important thing that they get out of it is that I want them to understand the, the relationships between political systems and their ideologies and public spaces. So what Joanna described in methodological way I adapted into specific case uh, of my hometown and to specific relationship between monuments and political systems and their ideologies. And this is uh, what we are what we are thinking about the, the first part. And now we can look into the steps of the of the lesson plan. So you can move to the next slide, please. Thank you very much. Uh, as I have uh, told you. Uh, I was thinking about my hometown, about Trebuchet, which is a small town with 22,000 people. And I looked on, on its central part because I want the students also to look at the public space, to read the public space, and then to work with it, work with images of it, work with monuments that are in it or were in it. That's why the central part, because those three monuments that I have chosen were part of this central part of our hometown. And I even tried the lesson plan with students in our high school in our hometown. Uh, what I wanted them to, to see, to, to start to read, was where the changes that happened in the central part over different time periods. And through all this, to understand the influences that the political systems and ideologies uh, do. How do they affect public spaces where we walk, where we, that we experience, that we encounter every day. But most of the time we don't think about them in uh, different ways, like what memories are layered there, what happened in these public spaces. So this is, these are the things that I would like to start the students to think about. So let's have a look at the steps of uh, my short lesson plan. Uh, because I want the students to understand the relations between public spaces and political systems and their ideologies, I selected three visual sources. And uh, in the first steps, they work with them. So at the beginning, they get instruction how to work. They get three visual sources, three textual sources. Three visual sources depict the same central part of the town and they are photographs with three monuments. The three textual sources uh, give a broader description of these three monuments and in these three places in time. So their task is to connect the three visuals with three textuals. And there is a set of questions for that is uh, general and that is connected to all three photographs and they have to answer them. After this first part, they have enough context and they have the images to connect them to. After that, uh, they are provided with a worksheet. It's a worksheet that is uh, basically the same that Joanna developed in her strategy. Uh, and it focuses on more context of what do they see. So they have the photographs, they have some contextual information and with what they know, they have to corroborate more on what is there, what, what do they see, what it is connected to. And uh, Joanna, in her strategy, specifically worked with plagues. And uh, she wanted the students to identify, uh, I think you can move to the next slide so we mm -hmm. can see the worksheet. And I can now describe it. Okay, so if, as you can see, the worksheet is simple and effective. It's a table where in columns you have uh, places for information about the monuments and in the rows you can fill in specific, specific, specific areas. And Joanna in her strategy wanted the students to connect the specific monuments or plaques or elements of public space to 
like in first row to connection to its connection to find the connection to its political social cultural or economic history then in the second row uh for the students to understand like whose past does the monument represents or reflects so which ethnic groups past does it does it ref, uh, reflect then in the next one uh to help the student to navigate their thinking into whether it is uh, local or regional or national or international history. I find all these things that go deeper and deeper in more context to what they see really interesting and amusing because the students are really pushed to think more and more about what they see, what was there in the public spaces and what, why was it there and what, what was it there for. And in the last part in the worksheet that you can see, uh, I asked about the changes. So uh, if it wasn't asked in the previous areas, what other changes they see in, in the photographs and with the contextual information they have. And this is, this is very important from my point of view, because this way they don't have just the visuals and some contextual information, but they get more and more understanding of what was there in the public space, why was it there? And then we get to the connection between the specific monuments in public spaces and political systems and ideologies. Why do feel the need to rename, reshape, to, to manifest the power in, in such places and specifically in this central part in our town, because uh, if we can uh, now look at the, at the sources or will you ask about that? Sorry that I'm again interrupting it. No worries. Yeah, yeah. And I was just wondering to um, uh, wondering about the, the, the sources that you have uh, selected. Um, so why have you in this case uh, yeah, chosen for these three specific sources and for this public space in particular. Yes, so uh, why, have, why have I chosen these, these three sources? Uh, because they represent and they depict the same central part of our hometown, because they are from different time periods, periods and there are three monuments depicted in the photographs. Uh, that uh, we can uh, work with with students in the classrooms and that we can really do some compare and contrast corroborate and go into more understanding not just about the, those periods but also to the public space and its function in our everyday lives as well uh, you can see the first picture the first photo photograph which uh, is depicting uh, a poll and manifestation and a military parade. So when I gave the students the this first visual source, uh, they can identify the monument, which is the poll, and they can clearly see that there is a military parade going on. And if they look at the textual source, it gives them more information, like that the that this is uh, the 17th Rangers Regiment of the Czechoslovak Army that was located in the, in the town, that the monument is Central Pole, where news were announced by local harbinger or military or political parades and manifestations happen. So this is what they get when they combine this visual with the textual source. Then we can move to the next one, because there was uh, the thing when we worked together that uh, there was a question, where was it taken from? And when you look at this picture, at the second uh, visual source, you can see the tower from which the first visual source was taken, but from in different times. And this, the second one depicts the statue of Milan Rastislav Stefanik. Uh, I think they can they could easily understand and connect it because there are not so many portrayals of Milan Rastislav Stefanik and this one is like one of the most used and in the local uh, in the textual source if they look at it uh, they could find the information about him that he was uh, one of the 
three most important founding figures of Czechoslovakia in 1918. And then uh, the location is also very important. That's why, that's why I have chosen this, uh, this visual source because it's still the central part. It's from a different time period and it represents or it depicts a monument that is again, crucial for political system. Mm -hmm. Then we can move to the third visual source, uh, which is, I'm not sure if you can see it well, but uh, the, the source itself is in good resolution. So if you print it out on an A3, you can clearly see you can, that there is a, a long uh, pillar and on top of it, there is a space rocket. The thing is that it's still in the central part of the town. So within 50 years, you can see how the monument from the 20s exchanges for the monument in the 30s for Milan Rastislav Stefanik statue. And then in the 50s, it was uh, exchanged for this space rocket. The, the statue itself or the monument was erected in the late 50s after Stefanik statue was removed. It, it uses the same basis, but the same basin, but uh, communists, after they seized power in 1948, uh, they wanted to erase uh, Stefanik as a figure from many parts in collective memory or, or memory uh, or historical memory in society because he was very inconvenient figure for them because he led Czechoslovak legion in Russian civil war, for example, uh, against Bolsheviks. So that's why from the 50s up until the 80s, we see uh, many attempts of the communist party to, to remove Stefanik from public discourses. Mm -hmm. That's why the space rocket, and that's why I think it's very important for the students to understand uh, the, the function and the significance of, of public spaces in their everyday lives. And I think we got there, uh, looking at the results of the, of the lesson that we did last week. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, thank you very much. It's it's very interesting to see what you have created based on, on the strategy. And uh, I, I think the sources are, are very fascinating. Um, perhaps we can take a moment to kind of reflect on, on, uh, on, on creating the lesson plan itself uh, with some very practical uh, questions. And I'm also very curious to learn more about um, how this lesson plan was actually received by, by the students in, in, the, in the classroom. So maybe just to start with a very, very practical question, but hopefully it will also give uh, teachers more insight in, into um, yeah, creating the lesson plan. Are the strategy and the lesson plan itself, are they easy to use? And, and how much time did it take you to actually create the lesson plan, including uh, the selection of sources? I see, thank you for the question. So uh, if you look at Joanna's uh, strategy and at my lesson, my short lesson plan, uh, I think if teachers will go through both of them, they would understand the structure, the core very easily because Joanna's strategy has a very nice methodological structure and has good recommendations. Like if you don't want to go this way, you can go to the other because she also mentions not just monuments or plagues that she uses as example, but you can also work with street names. And uh, then it comes to my mind that you can even work with maps if you want to about the specific public spaces. So uh, if you look at her strategy, at her example, and maybe as my short lesson plan as example, I think you get the idea because it gives you clear step-by-step -step continuation and mm -hmm. then good set of questions. This is also a very important part of her strategy. Mm -hmm. So overall, it didn't take a lot of time for you? Uh, talking about the time, I think it was just an, over an hour. Okay. I think it, it was enough time to really think, rethink, shape, reshape it again. And when I'm talking about the sources, mm -hmm. it didn't take that much time because I'm collecting sources for a few years about my hometown. So I just look at them. And when I was thinking about the lesson plan, I already had some ideas in mind, so it was easy. But uh, I would like to 
point to one thing that when, for example, you are thinking about such a lesson in uh, Slovakia, mm -hmm. there are uh, many sources or uh, places where you can look into. Nowadays, and thanks to technology, you we can easily uh, search or Google visual sources online. But then almost every town has uh, already published book about the town in old mm -hmm. photographs, which was a very popular thing in last years. Plus, there are also many, uh, many online sources in, in map forms. Like if you want a map about your place, you can get it online. Yeah, maybe it would be useful to also uh, include a few of these links in the, in the description below the video so, uh, so people can, uh, can have a look at it if they like. Um, and then in terms of challenges, because I, I understand the strategy is in developed such a way that it's it's very easy to to implement and to create your own to create your own lesson plan given its structure. Um, but uh, yeah, when applying the strategy to your local context, as you have done, um, what challenges did you encounter? So let's say, well, in this case, it was very easy for you to find resources and to find these textual and, and visual sources. Um, but did you perhaps encounter any difficulties when it comes to different levels of education or the execution in, in the classroom? Uh, actually, the, the, like, the most difficult obstacle was how to deliver it because uh, of the pandemic situation. Uh, right. Now it's, it's quite hard to get into classroom mm -hmm. because I'm not a regular teacher. And, but we had, found a way that worked like a charm which is still a mystery to me because we didn't talk much about the way how to deliver it just about what we deliver mm -hmm. and we, I just connected to the classroom the students and the teacher were in the classroom and I was there just on the screen so it worked in a hybrid way so I was online they were in class and every time I gave them instruction then the teacher helped me in the classroom she uh, distributed the materials, helped them with the answering the questions. And when in groups, they appoint and spoke person. Mm -hmm. uh, the spoke person came to the front because there was next to the screen, there was a laptop mm -hmm. where she could speak to the webcam. I could hear her and uh, we could discuss things, which was very, very fascinating because I, I didn't think that uh, the technology is there yet that we can do it in this way, but it worked. And this yeah. was the, the biggest, I think, obstacle that we had. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to hear you found a way. And um, I mean, as far as you can you can tell from your from the students' reaction, how do you think the lesson itself was received by the students? Uh, I think it worked well also because, as I said, I'm not a regular teacher, and when I step in the school environment usually it's well received because i'm i'm a new element i'm not just there i'm not their regular teacher right. so and when i do workshops or lessons classes with them uh and the thing is that the teacher was there so the very authoritative element was still present so they worked they tried and all groups really really worked hard and discussed every part of it and i'm glad for that because there were so many questions that i decided uh, to put uh, one additional thing at the end to as their homework to think about three things that uh, they learned today two things that they knew already before the lesson Mm -hmm. And one thing that they would like to explore. And thanks to this, I have a few more ideas, like how not to leave this lesson plan as a standalone thing, mm -hmm. but to continue to work with them more. Great. And can you give a, a little bit more insight about, about uh, their answers? Yes, I, I can do that. Because uh, I will start with the thing that they would like to explore more. And... Uh, I didn't know that they had no idea that there are already many things online. So the first thing was they want to explore more old photographs of their hometown. So this is very important for me because it encourages them to look into more local history, yeah. which is also part of the educational standards in our country. So first one checked, yeah. I'm glad for that. And uh, then in the first photograph, 
close to the central pole, you can see a building, the biggest building in the central part is synagogue. They didn't even know that uh, in our hometown, there was a synagogue or a strong Jewish community a hundred years ago. So this is another thing that we'd like to explore. And one question that uh, still uh, tackles uh, my thinking is the many answers were about, they want to find out if public spaces are still being used for political goals mm. or for political purposes. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's really fascinating to see how um, how a lesson, a lesson plan can be such a big inspiration for students to uh, um, yeah to to even ask more questions and find out find out even more. So that's um, that's really good. And and now you will you will use these answers to uh, to develop more. To I, develop would, more I would I would love to. I have enough yeah. material and. Thanks to this opportunity to do this part of the course with you. Now I would like to go back to my hometown and um, develop uh, more lessons that I can deliver maybe to, to students, but I would rather work more with teachers to work with our local context, with our local history in my hometown. Yeah, that's very exciting to hear. Um, just briefly going back to, uh, to the strategy itself, how does the strategy compare to uh, to other strategies that that you have used in the past? Uh, yeah, it's for me the, the strategy itself provides us with a fine generic structure mm -hmm. that you can adapt in many many various things. And with this comes to my mind when we used uh, or when we did workshops with teachers about public spaces, we looked into uh, specific layers, like like I did but we usually work with layers or time periods that are not far from each other mm -hmm. because Joanna works with really broad time span with, with periods over centuries. And usually we just compare something that's like decades from each other. Mm -hmm. And then we also do just, or did specific things about historical figures. So just specifically focus on relevance and significance of one or two or three historical figures and why are there in, in the public spaces. And one other that I really love, it's uh, to work with the names, with the names of uh, streets and names of squares, because squares and streets are every time renamed. Political change happens, there's a, there's a change happening to the name of the street or the square, so you can work with that. And also it brings uh, or encourages students then to explore the public space uh, where they live more and more. Yeah. And I'm afraid we are, we are uh, coming to an end almost. So, so just to wrap up, um, two things. Is there anything, uh, this is again about the strategy itself, is there uh, anything that you would uh, like to improve or would you have any suggestions? Not, not really to improve. For me, the, the most important thing is to take this generic structure from Joanna yeah. and create more examples because uh, I can see many of them but it would be great to have at least five or six different variations. I know that Joanna, uh, Joanna in her uh, strategy already mentions three variations at the end. But if you look at it, if you look at the, the street names, uh, if you look at the historical figures, you can do more. And if you can bring in more and more examples, I think it would be beneficial for the teachers. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, just very, very briefly, are there any any tips or advice that you would like to give to teachers, that teachers who would like to use this strategy to create their own lesson plan? Yeah, yes, of course. Uh, first things first, uh, Joanna uh, did the strategy in a form to go outside, to do excursion in, in the public space. I did it in the classroom with the images of public space. So right now there are like two different ways which to go you can you can go out you can stay in the classroom but i would like to encourage and strongly recommend to to teachers to to go out to go with uh, their students in the public space to let the students walk around feel it experience it look at it 
and then work with them in the public space. That, that That's the most important thing. Just like, don't be afraid to stay in the classroom. I, I understand that there is, there's a lot of bureaucracy uh, connected with going out, but uh, I think that right there in the public space, you can really work well with what do you have there. Great. Well, Yudai, um, thank you very much for demonstrating your for yeah demonstrating your lesson plan, uh, the sources you're selected, and uh, and for these very practical but very important tips. It looks uh, definitely like a very uh, exciting lesson plan, and I'm sure it will be a great source of inspiration for uh, for other teachers across Europe. Um, to our audience, you can find everything that was covered during this session. Uh, in the links uh, below this video. And if you have any questions or you would like to have some more information about the project, about the, the self-guided course or the teaching strategies, you can um, contact us at any time via the contact information provided. So thank you very much and uh, see you very soon. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, bye-bye.